Are you ready? It's Fight Night Friday in the basement with Todd and Brett Wiley of Wiley Scale Modeling. We're going to duke it out in the basement. Look, I already got my Zacto knife. I got my beer bottle. I'm ready to go on a stabbing mission. I'll break it. I'll break it. You know, it's you know, a fight in the basement. Your workbench is is definitely a, a arsenal of self defense weapons if you <laughs> ever needed it. <laughs> Somebody ever comes in here and tries to start up trouble or take or or you know get yeah I mean, like okay I, all right let's you, just you okay yourself. I haven't touched I haven't touched anything. What do I have near me? First five things I could grab for a self defense weapon. You ready? I got this. Long slide out box cutter. <laughs> I got a Zacto knife, which eh, I mean I could I could get well many slices. I yep. got oh well I can't reach it because it's over here, but I have that big K bar knife in the beams. Yep. Um that would always work. Oh, this would be oh man. Imagine hitting someone with this in the middle of the night when you were hiding. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just donk, just donk oh, them on the forehead. My. Yeah, with you, one of those wire brushes. You hit someone with wire brushes or a file card, man. You just smash someone in the face with a file card. Oh Phew. my god, that would be <laughs> awful. That'd be absolutely awful. It's like a, it's like a cactus. Oh yeah, you got oh, yeah. those little steel. What else do I got down here? Oh, I got a lamp, a table lamp. Yeah, my microphone boom arm. Oh my god, my stool. Well, hey, only monkeys throw their stools. Well, and then I could. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> and then I got this. I got these forceps here, so that way I could stop the bleeding. I could just pinch an artery off and save oh, yeah, the day. Yeah. See? I got some too, man. I got some things. <laughs> what would I grab? I would grab this. My awl. Oh, my God. Yeah. I have an awl. You know, you stick that. Oh my gosh, we can't even get that. We can't get graphic like that. But no. I have an awl. It's like a four inch long awl. It used to be my grandfather's with a wooden <laughs> hand. And you can put it like in between your middle finger and your third finger and just kind of hold it in a fist and just stick. Okay. Jeez. That, that's pretty we're getting, bad. Huh? We're getting a little dark over here. If I had to defend myself quickly, though, I would want to make sure I take the, per the, the perpetrator down. So. I would yeah. reach up here and grab this light fixture <laughs> right off the ceiling because it's just some chains on a little hook. And I'd rip it right off and I'd swing that thing like a baseball bat. Uh, you imagine you hit with a freaking metal light fixture? Fluorescent uh, like light, fixture. Fluorescent light fixture? Oh, yeah. It would be glass going all over the place and everything. So that's – you need to go with something big to get the knockdown. And then yeah. after that, then you can pull the little stuff out, yeah, you know? Yeah, like my big brass lamp or whatever. Right, right. So, anyhow. Like, and then I got this chapstick, so if he's got chap lips when he's done, I can... His lips. Make oh, sure yeah. Don't have chap and then there's this. There's this. A, there's the file a card. The file card. Oh, you lift, yeah. Once they're down, then you lift <laughs> their shirt up, and you take the file card, and you give them a belly rub with it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. I'm getting, like, itchy right. thinking about that. Do you, have a bench, do you have a bench chapstick in case your lips get chapped while you're working? I do not. I yeah, do. I do. Do you have I'm gonna lipstick put it now. Well? Watch, watch YouTube. Wow, do you have lipstick too? <laughs> I'm ready to put my podcast, Daddy. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's jump no more. Well, Brett and I had the videos going for the first time. and we, Last week we did a video when well, we I had... I haven't uh, uploaded that one yet. Well, it doesn't matter. It, it, it was whatever. But my thing is... We had the we had the video going. And I kind of liked it because we're gonna do it now with me and Brett because now we can actually see each other and laugh. And I can see him laughing. We can see each other's faces. We're not really gonna put the videos up, you know. But but it helps us. So so now uh, I kind of like that. It's a new concept for us. Yeah. But it's I didn't really want to see that. G putting it on your chapstick. But well, uh, now okay, you, have. you can't unsee it. <laughs> That's true. I can't. I mean, I put that. it on a little bit more obnoxiously than I normally would put it on. True. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't emphasize the chapstick 
slathering motion quite as much if it was just me by myself. Things going on. Oh, I got some. Uh... Okay. Pull up my email I'm, here, man. I'm gonna turn off my background because it's annoying me. I got a thing from. Uh, 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 I guess this will be for our. Um, bullhorn announcements. But um, I want to make an announcement that uh, Ipscale, uh, I'm sorry, Ipscale. Ipswitch. Ipswitch Hobbies. Um, Models. Yes, they have released their first O scale kit. And it's, um, I would mention that. Uh, as far as this, the, the actual kit itself, um, I have not seen it, but make sure you go there and check it out at Ipswitch Hobbies. And uh, is it for hobbies? I guess it's with hobbies.com. I don't think uh, you're gonna be allowed to write read these reviews anymore. <laughs> well, not reviews, but yeah, bullhorn yeah. announcements. Sorry about that, Jack. Um, let me let me go, let me get you the exact address. Correct your mistakes now, please. I am, damn it. What the hell? Hey, I bought a mouse. Oh, yeah, on Amazon Prime. Did you? Yeah, for making it easier for me down here. Oh, I have a mouse here as well. Huh. Why won't my browser load? But uh, anyhow, so I have... To I have pull a, out the other laptop. I'm trying to get, get the page here. I should have... Having all sorts of technical problems tonight. We are, we are. My <sighs> Oh, that, oh, guys, by the way, this is episode 152. <laughs> we never did say that, did we? <laughs> so welcome. Um, make yourself at home. Well, I'm just gonna Take off your shoes, though, because I don't want my carpet getting nasty. Just put new carpet down. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, boy. It is... It's what hobby. It's I P S W I C H H O B B I E S dot com. So it's All right. Ip Switch Hobbies. I'll put IP a link in the description. W I C H Hobbies dot com. And his new kit is um, looking for it. Everybody's on pins and needles now. We are waiting with anticipation. Guessing it is Rockport Freight House. I'm guessing. Um, he never said in his email what the what the new kit was. He just says he has a new O scale kit. So we'll see. And yeah, hmm. that's it. Ipswich yeah. Hobby. Yeah, go check it out. He's got All O right. skills. So. All right, we, we done did it. Okay, now I do know this one. I just saw it today. Um, that is. Jeez, this is exhilarating tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Doing, <laughs> we're not doing. We're not doing too good with uh with the board, huh? No. Walking Mountain Models. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, he has a real neat new mill structure out. You need to go check that out. I saw it. Uh, it fits on the side of the hillside. It's really, really, really cool. Um, go check that out. It's a, it's a big kit. And uh, it's one of the biggest kits I've seen him put out. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's a cool one. That's a cool nice. one. Nice. So that's, uh, yeah, um, like I said, Foggy Mountain Models. So go, go to his website, check out his thing. That is uh, FoggyMountainModels.com. Cool. Okay. And uh, Jack, uh, good luck with your new O-Scale model. Um, and, you know, and hopefully we'll, uh, people get in there and check it out. Everybody's always talking about O-Scale stuff. Jack's got some really cool looking structures. Go check them out. That's Ipswich. I-P-S-W-I-C-H. Hobbies.com. <laughs> I love when you read. Like, okay. I'm not reading. I'm just reads. saying it now. Go ahead. 
All right. It's just, it's just fun to listen to you read. So, anyways, what's new in the modeling world? What's new? I had a lot of fun last week with the, the Halloween thing. Oh, all of our four contestants for the Halloween costu- uh, costume party. The Halloween. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. What was there something <laughs> I was not informed of? <laughs> the, the Halloween uh, show that we had last up. week. We had a contest you... with the uh, Halloween themed modeling, uh, either you know structures or diorama, and uh, we had Matt Hankins and. Let me, uh, pull up. I got it up. Let me uh, drag it up here. I had the post, and it'd be better if I just read the damn post because honestly, um, I, as Brett said, I don't do well with. Uh, we're this... gonna have to, yeah, we're gonna work with you here. I, I need help here. <laughs> Halloween <laughs> diorama contest uh, was um, sponsored by us and Monster City Studios, and uh, they gave the prizes. Um, we came to a ghoulish close last night, uh, you know, Saturday night, I'm sorry, at midnight, and we had four absolutely stunning dioramas uh, that would make your skin crawl. That's what I wrote. Ooh. Um, yeah. So we had uh, James, uh, the, the judges were James Powell, Jason, James A. Powell, uh, Jason Jensen, myself, and Brett, and we talked about that last week on our show, and we had a hard time. We couldn't pick between the, the four that we had. We had four, and, you know... If there was one that stood out amongst all the others, it would have been easy for us to pick. Even two of the four would have been easy for us to pick and give just give prizes to. But it the wasn't. The problem was they were all kick ass. It was amazing. So, so Greg Baker did that awesome small diorama, which by the way, favorite. yeah, he does all of those micro dioramas, um, and they're incredible. Yeah, um, I think yeah. he's got an Etsy store. He does. Yeah, uh, that's just absolutely beautiful. It was really well done. It was a hillside graveyard. You go, you go to our our Facebook page and look it up. You'll see all the photos. I put them all together on one post, and it was pretty cool. Um, Matt Gidley uh, has Grimm's funeral home, and it was like this this really dark looking swampy, and it had he had it lit, had fog. And a graveyard with in front of this old creepy uh, funeral home that kind of resembled the Adams family house, and uh, I just thought that was really really cool. He had the coloring down with the lights and everything. It was just real sweet. Um, and then of course uh, the pumpkin shack was done by Matt Hankins. It was completely original. Has um, has just this this pumpkin shaped building. Uh, it's a building and a pumpkin. Yeah, and it, it looked it like was, something it, out of a fairy tale. It did look like something off of, uh, you know, I don't know, um, well, whatever, like, um, like a fairy tale. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, like that. Something whimsical off of like a almost uh, like yeah, Shrek. Wonderland, almost, but it could have like, belonged in like Halloween themed. Yeah, was. it could have belonged in like, um, yeah, the the Nightmare Before Christmas movie or something. Right, right, and all like, these, oh, could, all these could actually. Dave Kruzix was a little creepy because he put our names on a cemetery. Uh... But it was classic. Oh, no, it was awesome, yeah. It has a crypt that says Wiley's across the top, and in each door on the front of the crypt, one says T and the other one says B, and then there's graveyard in front of it, and he did really great with his, his, uh, his landscaping, and he put it behind a diner called the Route us 666 diner and it, it, it's just really cool it has a big old skull and it has these figures like the grim reaper and uh dracula and everybody else standing around outside the diner it is it's it was just really all of them were excellent you got to go check out the photos i'm glad each one of them is a winner each one of them will get um the monster city studios uh brick monster kit uh in their scale and um, we will send them to you uh, as soon as I get everybody's addresses. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. Great uh, job, uh, guys. Yeah, it was, uh, it was really good. The contest was a was a hit, it, it, and it was it was definitely top notch quali- quality build. I mean, it was really awesome. I encourage anybody to go see it. But yep. So, what else we got, man? Oh man. Well, we got a lot. Uh, I most know. Import- most importantly, my uh-huh. 3D printer, or our 3D printer. 
basically you're a 3D printer because you're the one that's going to be doing all the work on it. But Dude, I'm obsessed with it already. I know. I can tell. Uh, so I went on Thingiverse and I got Thanks, a... Thanks, James, for uh, yeah. talking to it's actually, this monster. It's actually not... That, I mean, so I came from the, like, the CAD and design world. Pre- like That's what I went to school for. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at it because I've been out for, what, 13 years now and I've not done that. It's not what I went to school for. But, I mean, it's what I went to school for. I haven't done it since I got out of school. Right. But the, um, you know, the idea of designing in those things and 3D modeling is, is something that I went to school for. Yeah. So right, exactly. I'm, I'm picking it up rather quickly. Um, I need to figure out, you know, the contour lines and, and positioning my prints, really. That's it. Fortunately, like I, I've told you guys before on the show, I have a um, resource at work to help me. We've got a couple people down in our dental lab that are uh, just outstanding with with working with those different types of 3D printers. So I'm, I'm tapping into them. Um You've been asking them questions and stuff? Yeah. And I, I took in what I worked on today, the, uh, last night. Yeah. How do you like that? Oh, they thought it was awesome. And, they, and he get, he, and a couple people also pointed out the same thing online. Um, but, you know, he's like, oh, well, you know, if you position this print this way next time, their contour lines right. uh, won't be as drastic. And I didn't really even – dude, I didn't care. I was just so proud that I printed the car and it turned out good. For first shot? That was awesome. And, and, and he, you know – um, what kind of car was that again? It was a 1940, I think. Let me look real quick. And I was actually told me about how to find them. It's a 1941 Cadillac Series 61 Touring Sedan. Yeah. Um, and all I did, so the print doesn't obviously on Thingiverse or many of these sites, they what don't come. What year was it again? 1941. 41. Cadillac Series 61 Touring yeah. Sedan. Yeah. Um. So perfect time for us. It would be a yeah. newer. It would be a newer car on our layout. Right. Um. In our city, but um. You know we can have some new. We're allowed to have some new cars too. Um, right, right. But you know position. Well, I found the, when you showed me the website to go find the things. Dude, it's addicting. I was on there this afternoon. I kept going through, and I'm like, oh my god! I, I kept sending you links. To this one, try this one. We gotta try this one. We gotta try that one. And uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of them out there. You know, there's it's it's limited. There's only so many. But well, but, it's limited. But other websites also have them. Oh, okay. Like you can get off. There's other free ones from just other than the one I sent you. Oh, okay. Um, where there's and there's a lot of communities on Reddit and a few other places where and even on Facebook, I found a few 3D printing communities that they share yeah. um, files for for free. Wow. Nice. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll start poking around and, and, uh, I, you know, but it's just, cool. It's like, it looks like a little Sylvan car. You know, it's, it, the yeah. The Sylvans are, they're, they're, they're hollow inside. Uh, this one here has, you know, this is pr- printed all the way, you know, through. I mean, it doesn't, it's not hollow, but, um, I thought it turned out awesome. I'll be honest with you. So, yeah. Uh, and 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 the thing was, you know, when you break down and do the math of it, obviously mm-hmm. the printer cost us a little bit. When that wasn't that much, it was one hundred and sixty nine dollars for a printer. Um, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And the resin, depending on what type of resin, I, mean, I know there's better and worse resins, and yada yada, and whatever. Right. Everyone's got their opinions. I've already learned it's a very. Hang on. I heard it. Oh, it's a fan on my computer. Oh, okay. It's the, listen. The three D printing world is just as caustic as the model building world, <laughs> where <laughs> if you get on there and you ask about a certain thing, of course you're going to get half the people that just light you on fire. Um, yeah. Because you asked about, oh, why would you use that brand? Well, I would never use that brand. Yeah. But you know, but then there's a lot of other people who point you in the right direction, and I found some resins. That are, um, you know, other types of resins we can use. Uh, I learned. takes a liquid resin. Yeah, I learned right. some curing tips uh, on these forums. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Uh, I found uh, a couple cheaper UV curing lights that we can get, like right. on the cheap. 
Uh, in fact, so let me one... get this right because I don't know the process completely. Let me just see if yeah, I... you're right. I'm not an expert, but I'll tell you what I learned last okay, night. Okay, well, this is what I <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let me get this. The, it's a liquid resin, and I guess as it pours out into the, what shape it's going to, no. a, a UV light no. hits it and cures it. It doesn't pour out. Well, how's what's how's it build like that? So there's a there's a tray, mm -hmm. and you pour the liquid resin into the tray. Uh, right. And you fill it to about the fill line. Right. Or depending on if it's a bigger print, you might need to go back and pause your print and add some more. Mm -hmm. But from what I learned, you know, I only did, I've only been in this for 24 hours now. Um, <laughs> and there's way more people. Um, listen, we're going to don't send me emails. I know I'm going to do something <laughs> wrong. Unless you're sending me an email or a message on Facebook to help me. Yeah. Don't say, well, you're doing it all wrong. I know. If you're going to just send me an inflammatory email like that, just tell me what I need to do to do it right. Right. But anyways, anyways, all right. Poured my resin in the tray. And then under the tray, there's a there's a, a, a panel. I'm going to get all the words wrong until I learn all the terminology. There's a, um, a screen, and basically a LCD screen. Mm-hmm. But it's got UV. It's it, I, don't, I don't know if it's UV or whatever it is, but it's, it's a light, light-up screen underneath. Mm -hmm. And then there's a tray that drops down, a printing tray that drops down into the resin. Okay. So imagine my zoom screen or yeah. my my escape screen. My fingers dip below the screen where you can see. Now yeah. it's in the resin, and on that plate, it flashes an image, and it cures that, or not cures it, but it hardens that resin through to light. the tray one layer at a time. Then it comes up and back down, and up and back down. Oh. And it slices that 3D image. Over and over and over and over again, hundreds of times, and every time that that tray flashes, I'm guessing a UV curing light underneath, yeah. it pulls up, and then back down, and then back up, and then back down. Oh. So it's curing it one level at a time. Oh wow! It's not curing it, but it's 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 hardening that resin one layer at a time. You have to cure it obviously afterwards. It's kind of right. sticky, slimy. I gotta uh, come watch to see how it's done. Can you well, it's gonna take it? a while. <laughs> it Can don't, you see it, it working or no? It's not. It's kind of anticlimactic until it pulls uh, out of the tray. Okay. <laughs> if you're doing a taller, so my the car I did, Dad, was only you know. Yeah, it's a car. It's a HS Go car. So what, even when it's done printing, it's only you, at the end you can't really. It's still kind of in the tray. Right. So when it's done, it rises up out of the tray and you see it. Now, if we're gonna do a taller print, then you'll see it. You know, going back in and out, you'll see it emerge from the the okay, resin gotcha, tray. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it was exciting to pull the cars out. And a car, the car I printed only took about an hour. Yeah. Um, and I printed it on the highest like quality setting that I could. Yeah. And it only took an hour. So wow. tonight I loaded two on one. Two cars. Yeah. Wow. The Ford V8. Deluxe station wagon that you sent, the nineteen thirty eight wood yeah, panel, like a panel wood wagon. panel woody thing, yeah. Yeah, so I laid it out where I could print two on the tray. Okay. And then only two of them, an hour and fourteen minutes. It said hour and fourteen minutes. Now, yeah. yeah, last night when I printed that car, it was about fifteen minutes faster than what it estimated on the screen. Right. So if if I can get two vehicles in an hour and fifteen minutes, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And it only costs, if you divide out the materials, if you exclude the cost of the printer, right? and you divide out the materials for the resin, mm -hmm. I mean, these cars are going to cost us less than a buck a piece once I nail them down. Yeah. Hell, the one I did last night, even though it's got some contour lines, if we do some very light work Sanding. with it, you won't be able to tell. And yeah, acrylic, I if, I use an, if I use an acrylic you. paint or something, yeah. too, uh, you know, the layers are so thin and so almost smooth to touch when you run your fingernail over it that right. um you know a little bit of touch-up work and some paint you won't even see those lines right, right. but you know i'm trying a, a different layout this time so hopefully my my contour lines are less mm -hmm. um but damn if we can do some if we can do vehicles under a dollar a piece yeah. holy shit yeah that's why i look at it i mean you said we'll probably out of a one bottle of resin uh, one li one liter bottle of resin, we're gonna get thirty or more. I'd say like two dozen. All right, two dozen vehicles out of it. Okay, it's, it's and, and let's say if I would buy two dozen vehicles and kits and build them, I'd be talking 
200 Jeez. bucks, 250 bucks. Yeah. I'm Instead going and I'm going on the and I'm going on the low end. If each kit was on the low end, ten bucks yeah. a piece. Yeah, and they're more than ten bucks. Right. But because so, uh, you know, by the time mm-hmm. by the time you order them and you pay for shipping, it's more than ten dollars a car kit. No matter you know, for most places. So, so if I get two dozen, and I paid fifteen dollars, so they're less than a dollar, and they're nice looking. I mean, I'm gonna, you have to paint them either way. And uh, yeah. and I'm going to be able to populate finally because is what one of my pet peeves of this hobby. I'm going we're going to be able to finally populate our layout with vehicles, all yeah. kinds. There's trucks too, you know. So I mean, and and the other thing that's cool is, um, you know, there's other models available online. So yeah. we we can we and I also have access to a 3D scanner. Right. So, um, if we can find like accurate, larger scale, better, you know, you go to a toy store, not Matchbox cars, but they got the larger ones mm-hmm. of like antique vehicles or something. If we can find old, like larger models uh, yeah. up to a foot square, I can scan them and then we can print more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you know the you know the larger die cast cars like the big ones. Yeah. They're like not Tonka size, but they're like right. Yeah. Big. They're smaller than if, that, but yeah. If 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 you're at like a if you're at like a a yard sale and you find some antique looking like old old nineteen twenties die cast cars, big yeah. ones, we I have access to a three D scanner. We can uh, scan them in to an oh. STL file and print them. I'll look next time your mom drags me one of those freaking flea markets or something like that. Plus, there's a plus. There's a there's at least a hundred thousand people on the internet that will probably help us. Right. Even oh, if yeah. I gotta throw them, a, even if I gotta throw them a couple bones to design me a file for a couple yeah. bucks. Well, right. shit. If I if I could print that car or truck ten times and mm-hmm. I paid twenty five thirty bucks for someone to give me a file, then I'm happy with that. Right. Exactly. Still yeah, cheaper than awesome. the, buy. It's still cheaper than buying ten of that truck. Oh yeah, for sure. So, we'll, so uh, not, and it's, it's not, not just, just vehicles. Trucks. We can do all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, I was looking up on some of these websites. I found some um, some rowboats. I found a couple nautical things. I found some buoys, um, like obviously barrels, all that kind I of stuff. Found anchor. There's all kinds anchors. of anchors. Um, there's I found street lamps for. Okay. There's a guy that was doing. Um, larger street dioramas it looked like he did a lot of military like world war ii modeling right. but he had those he had what's that at 135th scale yeah but i mean yeah. i can scale them down yeah and and he was he had street lamps and those old like cast iron street lamps and uh not gas lamps but you know what right. i'm talking about right right um and he had like we don't need i mean he had fire hydrant he had a bunch of stuff um old building like things that go inside of buildings like meters and and conduit and stuff like that we can print all that crap sure so the possibilities are endless plus if it's basic stuff like electrical boxes on sides of buildings i can crank those out in my 3d modeling software um pretty quick yeah i mean i think that'd be great now now the question I have for for you is when you after we cast them, do we have to wash them? Some resin things you have to wash like a you have to wash like a resin. Uh, some resin things you have to wash. Yeah, so I I rinsed it off in water. Oh, okay. Uh, I know that some things have a release mold for resin from mold. There's no release, but there's, there's no, no mold, release. right? Yeah. So um, I found here's a tutorial I was working with, and I, you know, I wore my gloves. It kind of yeah. it didn't stink in my house though, but I right. rinsed off the part. I did rinse it off in, um, like just in my sink, <laughs> oh, yeah. in like a tub. Uh, I rinsed it under the faucet and then dunked it in a in a like a right. Tupperware container over and over again. And then uh, it didn't have anything to clean up, like, 
like support wise because I, I the way I mean the the bottoms of cars are flat so that was where it you it didn't have to do any trimming or cutting or sanding no right? no no because I didn't okay. the way I set my car I put it upside down so the flat part of the car was on yeah. the tray okay um and then it does need cured but I um I just used the sun today yeah I saw a um a tutorial on youtube if you don't have a curing station or a curing box or whatever uv lights that you can just set it like in a tub of water on a windowsill or just on a windowsill uh so on my windowsill mm -hmm. in my kitchen i just set the, the parts i printed the other night or last night and uh yeah and now they're they're not sticky or like there's like a sticky layer when you first pull them out and wash them right, right. but now i set it in the sun for a couple of hours, well, all day it's just set in the sun and um i mean i don't have uv filters on my light on my windows and right uh it had like a nice even cured cure there was no sticky stuff left over okay i mean that's a slower curing process i had all day but, so is um, it real expensive for a uv light curing no process? i was asking the guy i work with um and he pointed me at some things on even on amazon you can get some cheap you know under thirty dollar curing lights. Why don't we do it? Yeah. It's just UV. Yeah. So I'll work. I mean, I'll get one. But yeah. you know, it it yeah. You're it was a pretty simple process. Right now. And here's the thing: I'm not printing them, and I don't need them right now. This instant, right. I'm not printing like uh, if I'm printing a model car, I'm not like I don't need it this this hour. Right. So if I gotta wait, if I gotta wait a few minutes or a couple hours for something to cure and right. be patient, that's fine. Yeah. Um, especially once I start doing multiples and I have a little queue of cars to print, obviously I'm going to have, or not even cars, just detail parts and stuff to print. I'm, I'm fine. I don't need a lot of, I can wait. Yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, now, so that's, that's really it. So we will be able to print like barrels and all kinds of I don't need, things. Although we don't need barrels. I know we don't need barrels. I'm just saying, just an example. No, but I was thinking, I was thinking it would be nice to try and print some, um, you know, retaining walls. Yeah. I, I found a couple patterns on one of the websites of um, some block and st and stone walls that look like the foundation walls that we cast in those molds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I want to try and print a couple of those in sections because uh, I can print up to a three and a half inch wide by a almost five inch long section. Right. And then height wise I can go up to about six or seven inches. Oh, that's cool. I think. I haven't gone that yep. high yet. Okay. But so yeah. Do you... So Yeah. What? No, I mean on on the um on the uh the printing part of it, um what so when you pull it out of the tray, you had you four it's little stuck wheels. To a printing tray. It's stuck to the printing tray. So when you, yeah, I, I unhook my printing tray or I unscrew my printing tray and pull it off and you turn it upside down and there's like a, a spatula. You got to pop them off the, <laughs> the tray. Okay. Oh, I see how you, I see what you're saying. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So. Oh, that's neat. And then, I'm, you cure, I'm, I'm and you wash them, then you wash them and cure them. Believe me, when you said the other day, when you said earlier in the podcast, you want to watch them print, uh, well, yeah, you'd it's not like a there. laser cutter, right? Yeah, it's not like <laughs> you'd be that. sitting there for a long. You'd be sitting there for a while to not see yeah, much. Yeah, but, now, the, uh, ones, but you know, the, the ones that use the the resin that comes on a spool, um, it's like a extruding. Yeah. Now those you can watch, can't you? Yeah, or I guess. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they. I'm sure they are. I don't know much about yeah. them. I've never. Okay, I'm only yeah. 24 hours deep in the one I got. Jeez. Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, they, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's more visual than what the one we have is, but, right. um, you know, that's cool. That's what we got. Nice. I'm excited. But yeah, but, and, uh, yeah, and some of the YouTube videos and stuff were talking about how it stinks and this and that. Yeah. There really wasn't any odor. Um, yeah. I did do it. I did do it in a in my kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, was no, there was no odor. Uh, I even walked outside for a little while, came back in. The house didn't have any odor, nothing. Right. You had to have a certain um, temperature to do it in, or is it not? It matter? said room temperature. Yeah, okay, well. 
So not down your basement in the middle of February. Yeah, no. Well, no, I, I, I think you can, you know, I don't know. I don't know how about printing. I, I won't print down here in the winter. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably just do it. Now, I did see there's a couple of things you can do if you do have some smells um, where you can kind of make shift. There's a vent off the back and it's just a, it's just a computer fan. Right. Uh, the vents out the back. And there was a guy on YouTube that showed a tutorial on how to make a vent, basically, that you could, like, poke out of a window. Yeah. And then that fan would blow it straight out your window or wherever, outside. Right. Uh, so, if I, you know, if I'm printing inside and I get some odor or whatever, I could. But my wife, who's more sensitive to that kind of stuff than I am, didn't even notice a smell or anything. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I... I I didn't notice any issue. And I know we were on the patron call or the patron Zoom the other night um, on Sunday night. And uh, people were talking about using a soy-based, I think it was a soy-based print resin. Okay. And it has an even lower odor. So I might give that a shot if, oh. you know, if I run into problems. But I haven't yeah. had a problem yet. So Cool. Yeah. But nice. yeah, so now I'm printing, now I'm printing those two trucks. Uh, I want to do something other than a truck next, so I might do like um, I might do like a, uh, something for my kids. Yeah. yeah. Um, my daughter was my daughter was like, "You should print us a toy," and I'm like, "Well, I don't know what kind of toy." So I, I found some like block puzzles on uh, yeah. the one print site, so I might do a fun like block puzzle. That's cool. But yeah, I mean, hell, if we can print like street lamps and telephone poles and shit like that. Yeah, and and vehicle everything we need like that, man. Yeah. Dude, this it'll pay for itself in no time. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. That's cool. But That's even cool. like tanks, I saw like uh, water tanks and oil tanks and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah. It, pretty much literally anything you can think of now, we're gonna give it a shot. Yeah. So. so. Nice. That's well, cool. that was my exciting purchase. Um, I didn't have yeah, an thanks. exciting purchase. Well, I thanks. did actually. Hey. You did. You did. I did. You talk about it? Yeah. I have ordered and uh, from C- C- B- 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 Oh, my goodness. From, uh, Seaport Model Works. <laughs> I ordered a lighthouse uh, from Seaport Model Works. Let me pull it up and um, got it right here. So, but um, yeah, I was thinking about it. We have a we have one lighthouse down at the one in, in the main, in the old original harbor. Okay, yeah. We don't have a lighthouse in the in the new section you're doing. Well, we kind of do, but you and I were looking, and there was a, some bigger lighthouses, and I thought, you know what, that'll be kind of neat to make a, a a more unique looking bigger lighthouse down at the one end, and then use that little lighthouse in the middle somewhere. Or wherever we want to put that one. Right. But, um, yeah, so I, let me get to pull it up here, uh, categories. Um, I went to Seaport Model Works because I love his stuff. He's got some really cool boats and structures. And it's, if you're looking for stuff that's made for, you know, the aquatic and the, and the you know, marine uh, kind of line with boats and, and you know, waterside structures and things like that this is this guy's got the stuff and um and he's a good guy bruce nickerson runs it so i called bruce on the phone i placed the order and then i called him and i'm trying to find a of course i'm there we go lighthouses <laughs> and um and i talked to him and i ordered this lighthouse it's called um the miss billion lighthouse kit it's not expensive. It's like eighty nine ninety five, um, but it's got a really unique look to it. it looks like a, almost like a country house, and then it's got this square um, light. You know, the lighthouse itself goes up from it. It's square. It's got some, um, you know, single shingled walls around it, and it's got uh, just a really cool uh, upper tower part where the light is and a rail around it, and. It, you just got to go and check it out. It's it's a really neat lighthouse, and I've not seen anything quite like it. And it's mm-hmm. actually based on an actual lighthouse, which is cool. So it's a prototype. Like a lot of Bruce's stuff is a prototype 
on his uh, his boats and things like that. Yeah, most of his stuff. This man is. does a lot of research on it. In fact, you know, but this uh, this lighthouse itself is uh, located along the Delaware Peninsula. So this is kind of in our region for where we model, you know, because we kind of do that whole main Delaware, Maine, uh, no, not Maine, Delaware and uh, Maryland setting. So this is right. awesome. It's, you know, it's because it's Chesapeake Bay region, right? And it was built in 1873, and um, and it was in use until 1929, and it was replaced by a steel tower light. So this is an all wood structure right now, but you know, it's really cool that we have this uh, this this kit that I have coming in the mail. So I'm looking forward to that. That was my purchase. And uh, I think it'll be neat to have a lighthouse at either a decent sized lighthouse at either end of our layout. You didn't like my dog bar lighthouse. I like the dog bar lighthouse, and we can put that in the middle on that one it's long. Already, you can't move it though. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll have a smaller lighthouse, and then a bigger lighthouse. And so there were many lighthouses near each other in the same vicinity. Yeah. So it's not a light. It's not. Well, you know. and, and the dog bar lighthouse. I mean, it, though it's night. It's though it is yeah. a lighthouse it's just kind of a it just kind of has a red beacon right it's not like the other lighthouse on the upper end which would actually have a larger yeah um i don't know if you'd call it like a directional light up top that would spin yeah you know that's yeah. the kind of lighthouse that's on the northern end the southern end the dog bar just has kind of a red flashing beacon so if you paired that with a if you paired that with a larger directional lighthouse that'd be awesome i think it'd be cool so, so yeah, so that's yeah. what we're gonna do on that end, and and I have that and and a boat, and I have a couple of other boats of his up here that I got to put together. So so they're gonna be projects I'm gonna be doing. I have a tugboat and I have a lobster boat sitting up here waiting to be built or his or or from um, that's and now that we're talking about it, on the 19th, uh, we'll no. be recording with him, and we're gonna have Bruce Nickerson himself from Seaport Models Works on our show. As well, so that's uh, one of the cool things. I was talking to him on the phone. And I said, "Hey, let, hey, let's get you on the show." So he's going to be on the show. It's been quite a well. while since we had him on. Yeah, and he's a great guy. When we see him at the shows and things, we always spend a lot of time talking with Bruce at the shows. And uh, last show we went to, he was set up directly what? across from us, and we joked the whole time. The last yeah. time we had Bruce on the show was episode twenty-five. Nah. Yeah. Oh my God. I think that's awesome, so, man. It'll be great to have him on. 127 episodes yeah. since we had him on, and it's time. Yeah, yeah. For um, sure. I, it'll be 128 by then or something yeah. like that. But well, anyways, cool. I'm excited I to talk to Bruce. Him on. He's a funny and guy. Bruce is, Bruce is hilarious. I love having and him he on. He's a good guy. Yeah, dude. The guy knows his history. It's not like yeah. he just picks a. Not a history. It's is, not like he just picks a build a boat or a structure to to do and then makes it right. it's not like he just learns uh you know the dimensions and and ins and outs of the architecture of the structure he also right. you know can give you the whole history of that building or that boat that he has a model of right so it's more than just the building he he really gets into the history of all of his all of his models too oh yeah oh so, yeah absolutely so, so yeah, we have uh, we have him in, and then I have another guest coming on. We haven't set an exact date, uh, but his name um, is uh, Bernard Helen, and Bernard is uh, from Canada. He has a company that is called uh, Mini Prints, and they do resin printing. Uh, he does resin ca uh, cast printing of you know, animals, all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be interesting now. The, it's even more interesting now to talk yeah. to this guy. Um, but his his details of his animal prints and things like that, the 3D prints, are just absolutely gorgeous and super fine detailed. It's going to be neat to have him on, talk to him on the show. As soon as we set a date on that with him, that'll be fantastic. Um, and uh, we have another guest, too, but I can't announce that until we actually have set that up and confirmed that date. So, um, yeah, so we got some stuff in the mix, and I'm happy about that. But, yeah, got the lighthouse coming. Um, 
And I think I'm going to order a tank and some other stuff tomorrow. Um, and a diorama to put the tank on. And I'm going to try my scale, 135th scale in military modeling. So that's something I'm going to... What tank did with. you get? I didn't get a tank yet. I'm going to order one tomorrow. Or what tank do you want to get? I don't know yet. A World War II tank. I'm doing a World War II scene. Oh, okay. I'm even going to get a couple little figures and some uh, some things to do, like broken brick and things like that. And I'm going to order a diorama base uh, from Foscale Models, as he he sells a couple there on his website. And I'm going to go try one out. And I'm going to take take uh, test my skills at at doing some military modeling for the first time. So something new I want to try. I've been talking about it what for what a year and a half now, and uh, you're going to finally pull the trigger. I pull the trigger, I'm going to do it. What the hell? Something else. And we got winter coming up. And, uh, you know, what the hell? Not like I don't have enough other kits and hobby uh, projects to do, however. And I'll yeah, have all this. What the 3D, hell? Do another one. All this 3D printing things that we're going to have to paint. But, you know, still, I mean, it's, uh, I, I definitely want to do that. So, what do you got working on your bench? Well, I'm going to wrap up the um, Bachman Spectrum kit that I turned into the, you know, the radio station. Right. Um, I'm going to wrap that up. I need to find... Well, I don't need to find one now. I might be able to make one. Uh, yeah. Uh, a, a tower for the top of the building, like a radio tower. Oh. Um, so I don't know if I'll be able to print it that tall. I might have to break it into two parts. With a yeah. slight, I'll slice that print into two pieces. But, um, you know, I think I can find something like that. And if I look it up now, I bet yeah, I could find something. But um, I'm gonna, I want to wrap that up. Uh, and then next, I think I'm going to actually bust out the um the ma- massive carolina craftsman kits wiley's uh oh, pencil slash yeah. me- the mega build from that that's so that's cool that's cool yeah that's coming nice. but um yeah that that's my uh that's i think that's gonna be my next one because that one's gonna take some time i'm also gonna go back over to the terminal and wrap a couple things up over there on that build um, just because, you know, th- there's some things I want to just um, complete with that. Right. Yeah, so. I get that. I get that. But, yeah, I jump That's around nice. a little, too, though. So. You got what? So I just looked up on Thingiverse. There's an HO scale radio tower. Boom. Nice. Nice. Found it. I don't know how That'll tall it is. But... Right. Now, you, that's a question I got for you on that. So how do you scale it down, Brett? Well, the printing software that I have that works with our our printer, mm-hmm. um, I can I, I import it and then I find the current height of the build. Yeah, and then I it, say it's I don't know say it's six inches. Yeah, uh, on the plate. Well, then what I'll do is get on Google and look up like. What's a regular height for a rooftop radio tower? And if I can find some kind of his like measurement that would be accurate to what I need, then I convert the actual height of a radio tower in real life on a rooftop. Like if I can find a couple that were like, oh, it's it's typically fifty six feet. I don't know. I'm making something up. Yeah. Um, if I find one that was fifty six feet somewhere in some historical whatever. Then, or like for the, for instance, the vehicles. I looked up that model vehicle and found out the height from the the cur- the curb height of that vehicle, uh, and then I converted it over to HO scale size, and then converted that into millimeters, and then put that into my program that exports it ready for print. Oh, so I just I just do some quick quick calculations on Google. <laughs> uh, calculator like google's yeah. got a calculator convert millimeters to inches and inches how do you millimeters. convert it to an hs scale well i just told you so say the say the trucks for instance tonight the 69 and a half inches from right. the curb height okay so then i go over to an ho scale conversion okay. on a website and i type in 69.5 inches in HO scale in real okay. life is, I'm just going to make up numbers, guys. Don't quote me on this, is 0.7885. Right. And then I take 0.7885 and I convert that to millimeters, which because okay. my printer prints in millimeters um, or millimeter measurements for that program, 
uh, and then I just enter the millimeter height of that model, and then the whole thing shrinks down to what I need it to. Oh, neat. that's so cool. That's really it. Oh, so yeah. I just got to do some quick calculations. It takes two minutes on a Google search, and then I'm good to go. Oh, nice. And I found a cool website that has a, like every model railroad scale. Yeah. And then you just put in the real life measurement, which if it, it's okay if you got it in a one foot ruler, right? Right. And you can um, scale for your HO scale ruler or, or right. N scale, whatever. But when you're dealing with something that's normally like, you know, six and a half feet tall, right? Listen, I don't have the mental capacity to do that <laughs> calculation in my head, so I just found a cool website that the, that does that conversion for us um, instantly. <laughs> and then I just convert it to millimeters, which I need to do for my print program. Yeah. Uh, and then we're good. Cool. So. Well. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still very new in this pro in this whole yeah, thing. I think it's so great. Like, I think it's great. You. If you've anyone a lot out already. there, I know we interviewed Dave Yale and a couple other people, and they've been more experienced on 3D printing than us. So um, please don't discourage me by telling me i'm doing it wrong and just lighting me on fire like some you know we've had some guests do or not guests not guests listeners um yeah. we'll get the anonymous email from someone who just torches us and then uh yeah. run then never gives us an answer though they just torture us <laughs> torture us and then like yeah you know leave us out to dry but seriously if you are more experienced in 3d printing than i am i um love the I would love some tips. Yeah. So uh, okay. over the next couple of weeks, if you're hearing us do things wrong, um, then send me an email and uh, like, hey, I heard you were doing this with this program. Um, just an idea. I love using this and it works awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. True. Cool. Yeah. But um, anyways, hey, let's get into the patron questions. Yeah, let's do that. All righty. All right, let me pull it up. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I can't remember where that link. There it goes. All right. Here we go. Patreon questions. If you guys want to support our show and have access to all this awesome stuff. By the way, we're going to do our drawing for the kits, Craftsman Kits of the Month for our patrons. Um, probably tomorrow night since it's Friday. Okay. And it's the 6th. And the uh, November 6th is always my favorite day to do contest drawings. I'm just making shit up. Um, then uh, I'll probably do the drawing for the new kits tomorrow That's night. It's the green moon, uh, isn't it? Tomorrow night, the green moon. I don't know, something dumb. Um, so, yeah, I will uh, I will probably do the drawing for the next Craftsman Kits. Last month, we gave away two of them from Casey's Workshop. This month, I don't know what we're going to give away yet, but every month we give away at least two Craftsman Kits to two of our patrons. Uh, we try to add, open up the show for questions every week. Some, nights, some weeks we slip. Uh, we do one Zoom a month. And we have a couple other fun things we do in there, plus our Facebook group. And um, there's Will a bunch we do for of stuff a Zoom here. soon? Well, we just did one on Sunday. You missed it. Nobody told me. I put it on the Facebook group. Why don't you tell your dad, though, man? Call me on the phone. Hey, Pops, I got this you going on. You should be on. on the Facebook group interacting. You suck. What kind of son are you? <laughs> all right. Let's go through these Patreon questions. If you want access to all that good shit and some whatever else. Um, I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> That's all right. I, we were I, all I making fun of you. Sunday too. We're all, this Sunday, or this time when I do one, I'll just put the camera on my 3D printer and we can all watch it print for two and a half hours. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Uh, so I'll put a. They, we usually do this at the end of the month, though. But, anyways, if you want to access all that good stuff, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash Brett Wiley and uh, jump in on the fun. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, hey, also, oh, if yeah. I have some prints, if I have some prints that we're doing that I'm learning on, I might throw them out to uh, our patrons. Oh, okay. Um, like, PayPal, whatever. Give me, I mean, it costs 50 cents to ship the damn thing. So if I overprint some stuff just to learn, um, if you guys are up for it, I might just put, keep your eyes peeled. 
I might throw Maybe up we'll do some, some like, random drawings for some. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, listen, I ain't going to give away like all my prints. Yeah. But if I, I might throw up, uh, you know, like, hey, here's some, here's a batch of whatevers, yeah. uh, for, you know, first come, first serve kind of stuff. So I right. keep your eyes out on the patron group because, um, I don't know, I might just feel generous one day and throw some prints out there because. Uh, okay, so let's get to the question. I'm learning. I'm learning. Anyways, all right, let's move on. <clears throat> Has anyone else noticed an influx? This is from Lynn. An influx of modeling material from China lately. Personally, I won't intentionally buy anything from there, but have you noticed it? Um, I really haven't. I generally I don't, don't read my, where the stuff comes from. I mean, I <laughs> probably should, but I couldn't tell you if it comes from China or Pakistan or, you know, India or, yeah. or you know, Taiwan or where the same thing. But, but I, I don't, I, I don't look at that, you know, I, 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 I probably personally, should, I probably should. But, I couldn't tell you where the last ten things I bought came from. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't really noticed that. So all I know is it's hard to get craft paint. But I have so much freaking craft paint. Maybe we'll give some craft paint away as as uh, as some prizes. <laughs> I honestly, you, I no, got like some I, I, I got so some I wasn't, open bottles here. Honestly, I wasn't thinking about doing prizes. I was just thinking about like. Oh, and, just, like randomly, like if I do a print and I'm like, okay, it's good, but I'm learning. Yeah. I'm just going to toss it up on the Facebook group and say like, hey, whatever, first come, first serve, I'll ship uh, it out. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I can't do it with all my prints because I'm, right. you know, I want to print some stuff for our layout. But, right. um, if we get occasionally, ugly <laughs> I'll throw my ugly ones out there. No, no, I mean, I'm learning. So I'm learning and this stuff's cheap. So yeah. I just want to. I want to yeah. learn and print, but whatever. Anyways, that's not yeah. even a thing yet. Let's get off of that. Um, be the uh, next question. All right. Greg, question. Cass Greg Cassidy, will you print? Will Will, will Brett print three D toys more for his girls than parts for the layout? Um, <laughs> probably. But it'll probably be. I don't know. My girls were bugging me to print something for them, so uh, I found the cool cube uh, puzzle. Uh -huh. That look pretty simple to print. I might just print a couple fun things like that for them. Um, why not? It gets sure. me more. It gets what, well, and that the more they don't care if it has contour lines and shit either. So uh, the more uh, I can experiment <laughs> with stuff like that, they won't care. Yeah, they just be th they'll just think it's cool. Right. Uh, Todd, this is from Ron Piskel for you. Okay. How is the historic scratch build coming along? Ah, well, it needs to be drawn first, Ron. Um, so I'm in the process of the drawing. Um, it's something that I am doing. The project itself is something I'm going to be doing with my wife. Her and I are doing it together. And um, so she's been kind of getting on me about when I'm going to get wrapped up and drawn. I have a couple of the walls drawn now. And then I send those drawings out to... Um, to uh, uh, be uh, to somebody who's going to laser cut the uh, yeah we gotta get, gotta get the walls laser cut they're gonna do the brick because there's so two of these buildings are a lot of brick and there's some there's some clapboard but I have clapboard so I had to I had to have the brick cut and the windows cut and doors cut out of the brick uh, you know to to make it look as real this person did some stuff and it makes yeah. it look realistic and he's very he did good. good nice laser cut. Brand. Right. So, so as soon as that's done, then I can get to the building part of it. But here's something is, um, if I'm doing these two town, these two buildings are from the town of Gettysburg and they're two big famous buildings. However, I have a lot of favorite little buildings in Gettysburg and there's a lot of them that are made of clapboard, a lot of made of brick. And I plan on the, in the future, um, making a whole mess of Gettysburg structures, not, yeah. not, not for the layout, but no, for, for, for my own little shelf dioramas and things. And That'd I'm going cool. to create, you should try and do them in different scales. A bunch still. of HS scale. Well, I'm, yeah, I no. might do some, but I may try some different scales. I don't Never mind, but the HO for sure. Um, I'm going to do cause it, it, they look cool when they're small, you know? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's I, cool. No, I thought it'd be cool to do. Uh, I was thinking scales. If you could do some in N scale, yeah, maybe. I mean, or Z scale. No, not Z scale. 
<laughs> but uh, and maybe not in scale. But <laughs> but uh, I, I do what I know. I want to do what I know. You know, and, yeah, and I, I know HO. So I'm going to do HO. But but you know, there's a bunch of historic buildings, and I'd like to get to where I'm going to build them, and I'm going to save the yeah. drawings. And uh, if anybody else ever wants to have build them themselves, and they'll be able to do it. But I I want it's such a unique thing there's so, there's some really really cool architecture in that town uh, that there wide is variety too and it's and so. some of those buildings are very famous and tell a hell of a story so with the mini diorama i'm looking at putting them on sections maybe a foot by a foot you know and and then just have like a little storyline to them <laughs> um it'll tell a little bit like a small two paragraph story that i can maybe put on a, some kind of piece of I don't know. So uh, print it out and put it on uh, some kind of plaque or something with it. So, but what are you doing exactly? I'm taking a picture of your uh, of your background because uh, it actually look, like the lighting and everything actually looks like you're sitting in like an apartment, uh, <laughs> like a loft. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, anyways, it's, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a cool it's a cool concept. But I want to try and do some. It's I want to do some modeling. It's not necessarily for our layout always, and and right, just do right. it for just fun. Yeah, to and to you know to represent the historical side of, of things I like of so. our area, right? Of exactly. Our area too. Yeah. All right. Next question and last question from Dazzy J. Talk us through your three D printing model of printer and what you have learned so far. So we kind of talked about the process of our three D printing so far because I'm only a day into it. Um, but I got a anticubic photon, which is $169 with shipping included, flat $169. How can you beat that? Um, I, te- I remember when we bought it, when I texted you that night, I was like, Dad, it's $169. Like, how how bad can it be? I'm like, get uh, it, get it. So, you know, and it prints good. And we, we well, before we purchased it, before we purchased it, we watched some YouTube people. reviews. And we watched some YouTube reviews of it, and, right. and like the print qualities were good. So mm-hmm. I was well, like, well, well, the worst case scenario is we get it, and it's not the best. Yeah, uh, I talked to um, my buddy Kevin, who is a jeweler uh, who designs jewelry for a profession. He's very, very good. Yeah. And uh, I talked, I showed him your print today, and he said that that he knew all about that printer. He said that's an amazing printer for the value and everything. And he said that he's well aware of it. He has a whole mess of his own printers. Yeah. They're much higher yeah. end, obviously. But um, he said for your first print, he said that was amazingly well done for your first print. He said usually. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I was just saying. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, um, yeah, I mean, so we talk to people that work with these things. And uh, and some people like some modelers like James uh, uh, last week. And we talked to. Um, we talked to. Who recommended um, it to us. Right, exactly, and I know that we talked to um, Jake as well. Dave about, Yale, yeah, and Dave, and Yale. Dave. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but so what I learned so far, though, um, I learned you got to be patient, and I learned that uh, I need to get more isopropyl alcohol to clean stuff, and uh, I learned that my kids are now going to be obsessed with it. I just know they're going to be crazy about it. So. And that's about it. I also learned I got to learn how to properly lay Keep out, it out of the properly reach. properly lay out the contour lines of it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's that's really reach, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, they they can't get to it. <laughs> so, okay. all right. Well, that's our patron questions for the week. Um, I don't really have us to talk about. Do you? Wow, well, no, I don't really. I think we're gonna call it a night. I'm all good. right, sounds good. It's a short one. Ah, it's a, it's a it's short a, one. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. So she said. It's an hour. We're good. We had some <laughs> long ones and we have some short ones. Sometimes you come sometimes you come up short in life. But <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, All right, good. guys. We got, yeah, it's good. We're good. All righty. Awesome. Well, we're gonna call it an evening. Have a good night. Peace out. All right. Later. Dude, I All have right. to piss so fucking bad. <laughs> done. What? Done, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. See ya. Later. I got a pee so bad.